Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Here we are, another episode of the Always Do Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Nickel, and here we go. This is a big one, at least for me, 20 episodes. It's been very sporadic and all over the place. I haven't really done it consistently, but I said that I would try to do at least 20 in the month of April. So right there is a really great thing to just point out is that setting a goal for yourself and a time frame is super, super beneficial. If what gets measured gets done, so they say, and I wasn't really good at planning or measuring things out. So this is a really good one um, to aim for 20 podcasts in the next month. So in April. So today's episode title is called Why You Need to Post Content. I made a couple of uh, shorts, or I think I made just one video short talking about this and i wanted to actually talk about it in more detail i think i found a nice progression with that i want to make a short of a topic that just comes to my head then i want to talk about it a little more through a podcast and then maybe do some writing about it in in content for people who want to consume that way um but yeah this was one that kind of really hit home i've been thinking a lot about this because it is such an amazing amazing opportunity that we all have now and I'll get into that um, in just a moment. But the first thing I want to say is, what are you grateful for? <laughs> what are you grateful for? Just take a second real quick. Think of one thing. Look around you. What do you see? What are you grateful for? Your health, happiness, the things that you have in front of you, maybe the phone that you're on. Again, I'm on the weather happiness so i am just super grateful that the weather's starting to turn even though it's cloudy and rainy today it's still warm and if you're anything like me the weather matters <laughs> although i wish it didn't so much but it does i've got to go move to a warm place i'll tell you that right now i want to do some more research into that why people are so much happier when it's warm out because you can do things and there's life but yeah okay so today i do want to talk about why you need to post content and I feel like it is a need and the more I think about it I see it as a need that most people could easily fulfill for themselves and it could just help in so many areas of their life and that's what I want to talk about so the quote of the day I actually have two here and then I love this one this is actually one that shifted a lot for me I'll go back to this one quite often I probably if you've listened to anything that I've talked about before I've mentioned before and it's the one from George Adair and it says everything you've ever wanted is sitting on the other side of fear that single quote when I heard it is what got me to go do stand-up comedy and then by doing stand-up comedy is what led to everything else the path that I'm on right now getting putting myself out there wanting to speak in front of crowds or about certain topics i went from telling wanting to tell jokes to talking more about health and self-improvement so that's a a drastic (laughs) um juxtaposition right there those aren't very similar things but it it taught me that i wanted to kind of talk about those things and put myself out there more so and then That's what I want to talk about. In that quote alone, I found it so confusing. And here's why. I have a second quote right here. And this one comes from Stephen Pressfield's book, The War of Art, which if you, I think this is really for anybody. It's meant to be for like creative work type of thing, entrepreneurs. But I think this book is really for anybody who's ever felt fear. And that is 100% of the world, unless you're a child and you have no fear. Okay. And the quote is this. Fear is good. Like self-doubt, fear is an indicator. Fear tells us what we have to do. Remember our rule of thumb. The more scared we are of a work or calling, the more sure we can be that we have to do it. Resistance is experienced as fear. The degree of fear equates to the strength of resistance. Therefore, the more we fear, The more fear we feel about a specific enterprise, the more certain we can be that that enterprise is important to us and to the growth of our soul. That's why we feel so much resistance. If it meant nothing to us, there'd be no resistance, end quote. So I want to talk about that really specifically in the context of creating content and why so many people are afraid. So the first thing I want to say is I was really confused about this, these two quotes, because I thought everything you've ever wanted is sitting on the other side of fear. So I thought that meant, for example, let's say stand-up comedy scared me the most. 
or I'm not sure what scares you, dear listener, but whatever it is, there's something that scares you. And I always thought it was like a career. So if you had a career and you were scared of something, then that meant that that was supposed to be your career. And I think that misguided me. And I combine it with the Stephen Pressfield comment as well. And he says, therefore, the more we fear, uh, the more fear we feel about a specific enterprise, the more certain we can be that that enterprise is important to us and to the growth of our soul. And I really didn't notice that last part until just recently. And these quotes just actually today, and these quotes hit me so hard because I was thinking, oh, if you're scared of a career, or let's say you're scared of public speaking, that means everything you want is on the other side of that. So you have to go do public speaking. And that means you want to be a public speaker. That's where I got confused. And I'm getting chills just talking about this is it's not an actual thing or career that's waiting on the other side of fear, but it's you. You are the one waiting on the other. I'm getting chills just talking about this. You are the one that is on the other side of the fear that you feel the real you, the you that's full of confidence. The you that's smiling, the one that's happy, the one that's fear. I don't want to say fearless because fear is a good thing. It is an indicator and it keeps us safe, but not afraid of judgment, not afraid of critique, opening critique, all these things. That's what it is. This really is hitting hard today for me. It's just for all this time since I started comedy and I started making a podcast and making these videos and trying to help people. One of the biggest things is that that self doubt and that fear keeps coming up. So I just thought that was it. This is my career path. That's what I wanted. I must be meant to do this because of the fear, but it hit me that that's not it. I'm on the other side of that mountain of fear, just waiting, sitting, waiting for me, the scared version to meet the not scared version, just sitting there on the other side of the mountain, waiting for me to, to pick it up and cross over. And yeah, I, I'm just really excited about this. I hope this really makes sense and hits home is that it's not maybe a thing or career or anything like that. It's you. It's a new and powerful and confident and happy and fulfilled person. You on the other side of that mountain. And then you might be asking, okay, so what does you being on the other side of fear have to do with posting content? This is where it ties in so perfectly. Most people I know, and again, dear listener, I'm not sure, I can only assume, are terrified, whether they admit it or not, of putting themselves out there and sharing content. Again, when I made these little short videos, some of the comments I got on all of the different platforms, well, I'm not sure. That was the most common one. I'm not sure what to talk about. That is, whether you like to hear it or not, fear. Just giving you an excuse not to do it. So it's an easy way out. Like, oh, I don't know what to talk about, you know, so I don't have to do it. So don't worry about it. Or nobody will listen to me anyways. So don't worry about it. I've been posting content for a while. I mean, I do have a lot of followers and I do have more and more website visitors, which is cool. And believe it or not, the reason why I started doing this podcast again is I stopped for a while. I hate to say I look at the metrics, but I did and I didn't really have any followers. And then when I returned a couple months later, I had some followers and I was like, oh, OK. Again, don't be driven by the metrics or the followers, but it is nice to know that there is somebody out there listening when you're making these and you do really want to help. At least I do. And that's what it's really all about. So I was thinking if I'm not reaching anybody, but that's it. So I'm getting off track, but people are afraid whether you like it or not. There's always I could think of all the excuses that I had. Nobody's going to listen to me. People are going to laugh at me. I'm going to be embarrassed. What if my I was actually afraid? What if my friends and family see it? What am I going to talk about? What if I'm wrong about the things that I'm talking about? What if I look like an amateur? All of these things came up that I remember I did this back in July in 2022 when I first posted. And I'm still, I never want to forget that feeling, that fear and dread. I, I, 
always kept all of my posts up so it could always be there as a reminder and i have gone back accidentally and seen some of the old ones and they are horrible to watch but that's what that was actually the first episode on this podcast was you have to suck you're going to suck and that's okay that's a real thing that a lot of people are afraid of is just I think subconsciously they know they're not going to be good at something and therefore why try or it's an easy excuse to not try something. So that's it. I want to say about posting content is that you have this opportunity. Most of the world is terrified of public speaking and let's say I'm coupling these together, public speaking and putting themselves out there on social media. So I'm considering those two kind of the same things. I don't know. The studies aren't really there, but maybe you've heard that study where they say people are more afraid of public speaking than they are of dying. According to some studies, I've never really verified that, but it's an interesting one. And I know people are afraid. I've done when I was public speaking, sweating, terrified, mind screaming at me, you know, I'm sure most people are. And I don't think too many people will argue that. So that's my point. We now have in our hand an opportunity, a really safe opportunity to put yourself out there. You can do it from the comfort of your own home. That's what's amazing to me. I look back at all the videos I made. Most of them are just in a room. Obviously, now I've done some videos like outside around people and it's much easier to make that transition. I would not recommend just going to do it in front of people from the get go. That's terrifying. But now I could do it without even a thought and that's okay. But the point is you have this opportunity. So you have this mountain. Here's you scared, afraid, making excuses to do some public speaking and put yourself out there. And there you are. That's why I started this. You're on the other side, a, another version of you, the real you, somebody who's not afraid, somebody who's confident, somebody who can speak about different topics, somebody who doesn't care what other people think is sitting on the side of this massive mountain that most of the world, I would even guess 90% of the world is terrified to do this. I looked up a statistic when I hit a thousand followers, I think it was on TikTok, and I hit a thousand followers and it said it was like 0. 0.0001 of all the creators on TikTok had a thousand followers. That's insane to me. So all that means 99.9999% of people are just on here consuming. And again, I just keep coming back to this. This hit me this week where I was like, oh my God, we have this opportunity in our hand. Everybody on the planet has this opportunity to get over fear. And of course, you're going to have younger generations that it'll be easier for them to do it. But also, I think... It's not as easy as you think for them. I think they can use the technology very well, but everybody I've met and talked to has this innate fear, even the youth, to put themselves out there. I know some people who are making silly dance videos and that was fine, but then when asked to make real educational content, immediately shut down, not a chance. And that just made me think of like, we have this innate fear as a human species, and this goes back to, you might've heard this from our ancestry of living in tribes and that if you're ever outcasted from the tribe, that basically meant death, right? You couldn't survive outside of the tribe on your own, um, especially 10,000 years ago, let's say, at way past that 20, 30, 40, 50,000 years ago, that meant death, right? So it's hardwired into our system is to stay part of the tribe, stay comfortable, not get judged, not get outcast, and putting ourselves out there in front of anybody, public speaking, social media is terrifying. And that's a thing, right? Like if you want to go public speak somewhere, that's so difficult. Even I've been thinking about that. Like I like to do that. I like to motivate. I would like to talk to some youth groups. And I was like, oh, making those excuses. Where could I find a place to go? How could I possibly get them to let me in front of, you know, a group of kids to talk? Like, of course, there are answers to that. That's not that difficult. You just have to reach out, make a few connections and phone calls, you know, show them some of the body of work that you've done. But this is why social media is so different, right? And I, one excuse I, I think I can hear out there, even though I can't hear it, I'm just talking one way here, is that people might not want to do it. And I get it. I get it. 
I really, really do. I didn't want to do this for so long, didn't even think about it, really, until one day I just had this urge to do it. And then I was so terrified of doing it. And then that's when all this fear stuff was kind of coming into play. And I came across these quotes and I was like, oh, I'm terrified. So I have to do it. But that's what I'm saying. If you don't want to do it, you have no desire really to post. I'm not saying that's not a valid reason. It is. You might not want to do it. I get it. But I'm also saying, see the other side of this. You probably have a fear to put yourself out there. And what an awesome opportunity to crush that fear from the safety of your own home. And whatever you want to talk about, you like gardening, talk for 10 seconds about gardening. You like food, talk about food. That's pretty much all I do when I make content, just whatever kind of hits me that day. That's how the book started. I just started reading and I was like, oh, other influencers or content creators talk about books. I love books. I'm going to talk about that. There's something there. I made this post before of, uh, I actually made, it was my second post on my website. It's like how to find your passion. And I get this. I love this. I'm on the side of Mark Manson. Some people would disagree with this. It's like your passion is there. It's right there in front of you, but most people refuse to see it, right? There's, there are things you want to do. There are things you talk about daily. There's stuff you look at online there's social media you consume there's blogs that you read you know the things that you buy those are things that you're interested in it's staring you right in the face you're just doing it naturally you know for me when i look back at my amazon orders it was a lot of you know health stuff supplements different kinds of supplements workout stuff things like that and now i see it in hindsight and i was like oh no kidding books and exercise and health stuff oh it was there the whole time for years so that's a cool thing to look back at. But my point is you have something you can talk about. And then why does it have to be long? Why can't it be 10 seconds, 15 seconds? Then tomorrow you do 20 seconds and the next day. So my point in, in wanting to make this was I just feel like we have such an opportunity, many of us, to get, again, this isn't an advantage over the human race, but just to get a leg up on the world, the 90% of the population that's afraid to do it, and yourself. That's why I started this by saying you're on that other side of that mountain of fear. I'm telling you, there's somebody I met. I'm a new person from who I was, you know, seven months ago, eight months ago, completely different, completely. I had, I think I said this when I first made this podcast, I bought this microphone that I'm speaking into right now in 2020. I didn't make my first podcast episode until the end of 2022. So I hope that puts things in perspective. I had the thought of doing it. I wanted to do it. Sat collecting dust in the corner for almost two years. So it's there. It's right there to be a different person or a different version. And I can assure you a better version. And here's why. My four reasons of why you need to post because it will make you a better person. Number one, power. Now, like I said in my shorts, it's not power as in like, oh, I'm going to be super famous and, you know, everybody's going to love me and I'm going to be, you know, an influencer. None of that. I never got into it for this and I don't think you should do that either. But it's power in realizing the device that's in your hand. I think I saw a quick video or maybe it was even a commercial. The phone in your hand has more technology than the technology used to man the moon. Now, again, I don't know how accurate that is. I don't deny it because what we have in our pockets is insane to me. But we just sit there scrolling mindlessly, consuming content. No one's thinking about it. But when you post, you get to see it. You feel it. You post something and then all of a sudden somebody across the world is listening or watching something you're doing. Like I traveled for a very long time. I lived abroad for almost 15 years. And I talk to people still from all over the world using, you know, different technologies. And even that doesn't compare to how when I posted content and then I started to see the power of what this this is capable of. You can start a business on your phone. You could turn your hobby into something that you've never even dreamed of and you can't dream of it until you take action. That's another thing I talk about all the time is that you can never know until you take steps forward. If you want to go from A to B, you need to start walking towards B and then you might look over to your right and be like, oh, there's option C. And then you start walking that way because you like that better. And then you look over and there's another option branching off. So 
You can't realize the power of your phone, I don't believe, until you really start to use it, not let it use you. So posting content can show you the power. Next, number two, was truth. This one was really, really big for me. I posted a video about nutrition and health, and it went viral on one of the platforms. I had other videos go viral, but you know, that puts, it does put things in perspective, the truth of what you're saying. But especially in the, the realm of health, you get feedback from people, whether it's positive or negative or good or bad. Some are a little bit aggressive and that's okay, but you get it. You have to be strong mentally, but at the same time, you get truth back. You put something out into the world, you can get truth back or you can get other opinions. And that is the only way to shape truth. I don't want to get too philosophical, but I came across something like this. I think it was in how to read a book. That's actually the name of the book. And he talks about how the discourse um, between like Socrates and Aristotle and, you know, the Greeks was all about finding truth. That's what all of that was about. And that's kind of what you can do here with social media. Take an opinion, what you like, and throw it out into the into the universe and social media. Because you just, like I said, from tip one, it's the power. You cannot imagine the size of the globe and the impact that you can have and your community until you go on and put it out there. So throw something out there and you get some truth back and you get to make your opinions and thoughts and what you think is information or fact and you get to kind of shape that and make sure it's stronger and solid. And that brings me to number three is growth. This is everything I'm all about. This is what I talk about. And I wouldn't steer you in the wrong direction is that growth, if you want, I've been doing this for about seven months. Uh, I mean, growth, like exercising, daily meditating, cold showers. Of course, I've had some, I actually had, I'll be honest, I had a couple of weeks there where I really, really fell off. It was tough. It was tough. But that's the beauty of it is you get back on. You just get back on. That's the beauty of habits, actually, is when you know you don't do something for a while, but you've already made it a habit, then you know you're going to get back to it. But I'm talking growth. Like this is exponential growth. You can start making videos. And when you start to get feedback from other people and comments, you're going to start testing your resolve. First, testing your resolve to show up every day and post a video, testing your resolve to come up with concepts, testing your resolve to shift your perspective. The big one for me is, again, when you have a video and a lot of people watch it, you're going to get some positive and negative comments. And those negative comments will really, truly shape you. And I've had this even with not, without a viral video. I have had, I'll never forget it. It was one of my first videos I posted and there was a woman that just said, you know, I will, I said something about everybody has time. You're just not spending it correctly. And she got really upset with me and just said, I was one of those men that just didn't understand. And like all of that, again, I'm not discrediting her opinion at all. I'm sure it's, it's valid, but I will still stick to my point is that we all have time and the fact is you might have spent your i call it spending coins you might have spent your coins a couple years earlier on different things and then that now influenced your current situation because your past influences your present that's how life works but that's the thing those moments cause growth you know that friction so i i really want to say that power truth and growth and i added one more here and this is for you dear listener is community I still am in awe. Like my, I was inspired by somebody on uh, Facebook to start a Facebook community. And now it's up to, you know, 45 people. It doesn't sound like much in comparison to other communities out there. But when you, at least me personally, when I stop and look at it, I'm like, oh my God, 45 people wanted to be a part of a community that, you know, we've created, which I think is just fascinating. And I just could never, it wasn't even a thought ever in my entire life until that person said, Hey, you should start a group ever, not for a single second. So that's what I'm saying. If I hadn't taken the actions to do whatever stand up comedy or pursue my fear to go after it and, and post content, then that opportunity would never have come up ever. So I hope you see that the things that you can build, just posting again, if you're listening to this and you made it this far, you're probably thinking of all the excuses of why not to do it. Nobody's going to listen to me. I don't really want to. There's nothing to do or nothing to talk about. Who cares? It's not important. All I can say is that if you are consuming any content, 
then you need to post content. I don't think you should be allowed to consume any more until you actually become a part of the game, become a part of the posting and the power and truth and growth and community. Because otherwise, what else are you doing? It's just simple entertainment. But you, if you switch that, you have the biggest mountain for most people is public speaking or putting themselves out there. You have it right there, sitting in your hand right now. You might even be listening to it. It's right there. And you have an opportunity of a lifetime to get over that fear. So that's it. I'll end it there. Everything you've ever wanted is sitting on the other side of fear. Always do and have your best day.